Hey superstars, it's Glam and a Tea. I have for day two of Vlogmas, I'm gonna be doing foundation for you guys. Um, I kinda wanna show just a couple different ways you can do foundation. Um, one using brushes, one using sponges, and then the other one, oh, there's animal hair everywhere, I'm sorry. Um, your fingers. So I'm gonna show you kinda the best way to do it, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one half with brush, one half with the sponge and then I'm going to do my forehead with my fingers and the foundation that I'm going to be using is my cat. It's a mess. I'm sorry. I, this has been loved on and loved on and loved on. But anyways, my Kat Von D Locket foundation in the shade Light 45 Warm. Um, this is a little bit too dark for me going into the winter months. I am in the process of trying out a few other new foundations, but I just kind of want to show you guys simple steps. Um, I may prime half of my face using um, that I do the sponge side with and then unprime the other side so you can kind of see a little bit of a difference. And for my primers, I'm using my Milk Hydro Grip and the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Now, this is a dupe of the Tatcha primer, which is like $54 for, um, I think it's like a one ounce size container. This is an $8 dupe. So here we go. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to prime at my, I have my brows on, well, penciled in. Um, and then another one of the videos I'm going to be doing is just kind of going through everything with that to show you guys where we're going to go with it. So I am just taking my ring finger and going into the poreless primer. Um, what you really want to do is use this in the areas where you have larger pore areas. For me, that's around my nose and into my chin and a little bit into the forehead area. And then I'm going to use the milk primer on the rest of the face. And what you do is you just put that on the skin and kind of just press it into the pore area. And it a little bit goes a long way, just so you know. So we're just going to prime this half of the face, making sure to really press that in. Using your ring finger is usually the best. It's got the least amount of pressure when you are putting things on your skin, especially in the eye area. You don't want to do any pulling or tugging or anything in that area. So using your ring finger is really good with that. And into the cheek area. And then, like I said, I'm going to put the... Um, the milk primer on the rest of the skin. So for that, you just take out one pump. And then I know I said I'm going to do my forehead with my fingers, but um, I still am going to prime this half so you can see half, excuse me, half primed, half not. It's kind of a little bit of a madhouse right now, so I apologize. We've got um, we decorated our tree today. We put wrapping paper on some doors because we're weird like that. Fun like that? Weird like that. Both. I'm just a little bit touching over into some of those areas. So first thing that I'm going to tell you is whenever you're using a makeup sponge to do your makeup, make sure you dampen it. Um, this one is for another video you'll see sooner, but this is the sponge in its dry form. This is it in its damp form. When I was working for Clinique, sponges were bad. We were always taught sponges are not the way to go. You shouldn't do it. They carry bacteria, but that still is the case as long as you don't clean them. And that video is coming very soon as how to clean your brushes properly, how to clean your sponges. Um, just making sure you have everything taken care of so you can keep as much bacteria away from your skin as possible. And that's another reason why it's hard for me to say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do my foundation with my fingers because if your hands are not clean, you're gonna transfer oils and bacteria and push those deep into the pores. And it's just, that's why you need to start with a clean face before doing any makeup and clean hands are the same. So then we'll do the sponge on this side. 
and with the Kat Von D foundation, I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna dispense it onto the back of my hand. Knowing that I still have product on there from the primer, it's gonna help kind of create a barrier on the back of my hand. And I'm gonna take the largest surface area side to pick up some of the product, dot that on, and just kind of use a stamping motion to push that into the skin. So, this is probably the quickest way to do foundations um, with a sponge, but it also depends on the foundation product that you're using. Um, if you're using something that's a little bit more on the liquid side, I do pretend to use, I do tend to use brushes, at least more synthetic based, um, but these are very synthetic too, so my train of thought will make sense in a minute. So then now that we've got kind of this third of my face, got the foundation on, I'm gonna talk a brief minute about brushes. So there's a couple different styles and these are the ones that I tend to lean a little bit, bit more to, um, the synthetic fiber bristles of the brushes. So this is just your standard, this is an Ego Tools, um, foundation brush. It's flat. It basically, it's like you're painting right on the skin. Um, it has its application features. I've used, used to use this solely, like this was the only foundation brush that I used. And then I switched into kind of a dual fiber brush. Um, dual fiber means that there's white kind of more synthetic bristles that you grab the product with. And then the darker bristles kind of help just hold the brush's density in, but then also helps blend things out. And now I've been using more of this, well, so this one is the Kat Von D um, synthetic brush. I don't think this one's made anymore, um, but now I've been using a little more exclusively this e.l.f. blending brush, um, I ultimate blending brush. I do really like how this one works because it kind of gives you, it's got the dual fiber and this one needs to be cleaned. I used it in another, another video earlier today. Um, but you'll see kind of the same features. Maybe what I'll do is I'll blend this lower half with, yeah, actually let's go with it. So I'm going to use this paintbrush style Eco Tools brush, picking up a little bit of the product and then just kind of painting this on. So I'm using more of a stippling and pulling motion to do this. So this is how it's gonna look. Ultimately, you can always blend everything to be even. Let's say your your brush head breaks and you need to use a different one intermittently. You can always blend it to even it out. So then we're gonna use the duo fiber. Again, just dabbing. We want kind of the lightest amount of product on the bristle tips. So if you can see that, and then we're gonna stamp and blend. into the nose area. And you really can't see too much of a difference between the two. So like I said, if your brushes break, you can always move on to the next one. Then we're gonna use this last one. And I like to do this a little differently with this brush. I actually put the product straight on my skin. And then blend. Circular motions work. Um, blotting, kind of stamping, and then blending. It all works the same. So like I said, you can't really see a difference in the three. Um, and you really, for me, primer doesn't always hold up the best underneath. Um, for some reason, my skin doesn't seem to show tons of difference, but I just wanted to show kind of the process on how to prime your skin. Now there's a number of different primers you can get and I'm kind of backing up a little bit. Um, you can get pore minimizing, you can get hydrating, you can get mattifying. There's all sorts of different primers out there. Again, like I've said before, you can always um, message me and I can kind of help find you the best primer that you're looking for. So this last bit of skin that we're gonna use, do is fingers. And a bottle of alcohol in here, but my hands are clean still from washing the brushes. So we're just gonna send it. 
So with your fingers, always try and focus on the ring finger and maybe even lightly the middle finger. And then you just kind of put that into the spot and then you can see how the blending with fingers, um, it takes a lot more work to blend that tone out to get it even. So if you are using fingers, you can get um, at the dollar store, I know I have my Dollar General video, but at the dollar store, you can get brushes. You can get a brush for a dollar there and they're wet and wild. Um, they do have bigger versions, but it's the pink bristled with the white body. I do like the ergonomics of this one, these brushes, but I don't think I have, oh, I have the blush angled one. Maybe that's what I'll do. While I'm cleaning the brushes, I'll talk about their uses. Um, so again, you can use that to kind of blend. So as you see, it's a, a lot thicker, um, especially in, so this is what happens if you have too much priming product on. Your skin kind of, your foundation can pill up. Um, sometimes that's not as apparent when you're using sponges or brushes. You'll definitely feel it when you use your fingers. It'll just kind of pill off. So. I am going to just blend this out because it is definitely catching on that foundation. So that's kind of it. Always be sure when you're doing foundations too, to blend up to your ear and kind of into your neck, just to make sure that you've got the seamless coverage going all the way around. So I'm gonna just blend out. So that way it doesn't look like you're wearing a mask of makeup. It just looks more evenly blended within your skin. And don't hesitate to blend into your hairline as well. And then um, for me, I don't typically put foundation on my eyelids. I use a shadow primer for that, as you've seen in a lot of my videos. Um, foundations for me on my eyelids, my eyelids are super oily, so it doesn't really work the best. But that's foundation using brushes. It's so quick, right? I feel like this is probably one of my quickest videos that I've done, but it can go really quickly. Um, so brushes, sponges, and fingers. And the other thing is, is there's different shapes to sponges too. So don't get discouraged if you see there's like diamond shaped ones, there's um, your standard wedge shape ones, your standard teardrop. Don't get discouraged. These little tips make it easier to kind of blend um, all of your foundations and concealers into the under eye area. The one thing that I would recommend is if you're using a sponge for anything around the eyes, do patting motions, try not to pull. Again, it is a soft product, but you don't, your skin under your eyes and on your eyes is so thin, it's it tears easily and then more wrinkles show and everything. So just be super, super careful about that. Um, other than that, that's kind of it. Oh, t-shirt, Green Bay Packers. Packers won yesterday, so I, um, I did want it, this to make at least one of my Packer shirts. I have a few. There might be more coming in the future. Not sure. We'll see. But go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe. You can turn on, you can hit the little bell option and it'll give you notifications whenever I post a video. Sometimes what I've been seeing is they don't notify you guys right away, but it is an option so you guys can stay tuned. Um, I will try and link in as much of the information on my social media accounts so you guys can follow those because like I had said in yesterday's video, I'm doing the 12 days of Christmas Vlogmas, I'm doing 25 days of Christmas makeup wise um, along with my NFL series. So the Packers have already had their day with my makeup at least. So far, and they might come back around. We'll see. Anyways, thanks guys for stopping in and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.